Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. We are looking at the SGR by Schechter. This is the C1. And a few things that I didn't record the other day while I was working on this was the routing out of the pickup cavities and doing the striping on this and then masking it off and getting everything done. Now I am left handed. So if you see the left side of the guitar, when I was striping this, the guitar was turned this way. So you see the left side of the body, it looks a lot different than the right side of the body. Well, when I had to do this side of the body, I had to flip it upside down and then start at the bottom and go this way instead of starting at the top and going this way. So you can see that there is a little difference. It's not great, and even I will say it's not great, but it's not bad either. At least I don't think so. I know this side here came out really, really nice. This side here, there's a few things I could have changed. Um, and like I said, being left-handed doesn't help. Another thing I had to do was route out the pickup guards, uh, the pickup cavities on this thing. The EMG pickups do not fit the stock pickup rings that came with the Schecter. So I had to route out and then go through my parts to see what I have as far as pickup rings that the EMGs will fit in. So the EMGs are a little bit bigger. They were touching the sides, so I had to route this out. Now I got two different templates for doing routing. One is from Stumac, which is your basic, um, how do I put this? I guess a basic template, okay? It's, there's nothing really special. So if you're using pickup rings that are maybe made in China or they, they're not good because the hole placement, like on a Stumac and also on the other uh, template that I have, it gives you the hole placement for mounting the pickup rings, okay? Also, they're used for mounting the template as well, uh, so it doesn't move around. You know, I use double face tape, or I can actually drill the holes and mount the template in order to keep it in place. And if you use tapered uh, wood screws where it's got the angle underneath the head, the small enough to fit in there, then you should have no problem with routing it out and not getting binded on the head of the screw. Now, so I had to sit there and open up the sides of these a little bit. I didn't go into depth, I just went with the width. The sides over here are good, but the sides over here were bad. So what I ended up doing is routing this out. Now, the Stumac template, like I said, only works probably for like a Gibson guitar model or something like that as far as the pickup rings go. But for the other pickup rings that I have, and I got a bunch of them, um, they, the whole pattern for mounting didn't match up. So I ended up using that one on here instead. And the stock rings that came with this guitar as far as the pickups go don't fit the EMGs either so that's why I had to switch over them so I got that done now the reason why I say putting a clear coat on top of the diamond black is just like I say it is right now as far as what condition this body is after spraying the silver on here with the flame so got some overspray here on the sides of where the pickup was uh there's a couple of like little corners that have a, like a little bit of a uh, point coming to them that's not supposed to be there because it got a little bit under the tape so having the clear coat on top of this body makes it really easy to remove those without disturbing the diamond the black diamond uh, base coat that's underneath this and having some sort of problem where it's going to look funny once you put the candy on there and then putting the clear on top of that. Once the clear is on it, a lot of stuff is going to pop out and stick out that you may not even notice were even there while you were doing the build. So when the clear makes a big difference as far as what's under it and how it's going to come out and look when the project is done. So you want to make sure that you know little flaws and stuff like that are taken care of before you get that clear coat on there. So how I ended up doing this was basically using the, let's see, where's that striping tape at? Now I've got a 1 8 and a quarter thickness tape. Now what I should have did is I should have used a 1 8 tape, okay? I ended up using the uh, 1 4 and that gave me, a, you know, a good size gap between all the lines over here. Something that I wanted, but not this wide. I should have went with the uh, 1 8 tape, 
but the 1 8 tape is a little bit harder to mask up to because it's a lot thinner. So what I ended up doing is just using the tape that I use, getting all my bends really nice. Now the, the fun part about doing these bends is, is that if you want a nice smooth curve, you have to sit there, hold the tape, hold your finger down, and you have to go like this with it, kind of quick. And it, it is a, a, um, a technique for doing it. And a lot of these guys that do this, they kind of have it mastered. I mean, they don't make too much mistakes. They're actually pretty good at uh, going with the flow of what the curve and how the curve that they want the first time around. Me, I had a pile of, you know, tape that I ended up kind of, it's been a long time since I've done this stuff. And the last time I did a flame job on anything was, um, shit, I had a 93 uh, Beretta GT. And I flamed the hood and the front fenders into the doors with uh, just, it was a red car, and I just went with black flames on it. And uh, that was the last time, and that was like, wow, back in 90, shit, I want to say like 95, somewhere around there. So it's been a while since I was doing any paint work and stuff. And then we had the Model A pickup truck that we were restoring, but there was nothing custom about that. That was just a basic tear down, primer, repaint, fix whatever damage it was, and put back together. So it's been a good length of time. So right now in this thing here, I have to, I filled up some of the holes. Only used two of the uh, outside of the holes to mount the pickup rings on there when I was doing the paint so I got to take a dab of black paint and then hit it on top of those so that kind of camouflages them hides them a little bit I don't care if it's just regular black because they're underneath the pickup ring anyways so that's not going to show so when I hit it this with the candy I have to have the pickups installed on this otherwise you're not going to get the same um, spray out doing it separately all right, you never do. When you have multiple parts, you have to count how much paint you put on there, how fast you're putting the paint on, and how many coats of whatever you're putting on there uh, on each piece in order for it to come out the way you want. Well, when you have small pieces like this, your spray out is going to be a lot quicker moving over them because they're smaller in diameter. And then you want to get a 50%. 50-50 uh, overlap. So if your sp your spray pattern is about like yay wide, you know you want to overlap half of that onto whatever you sprayed in order to get nice even coats going all the way up. That's difficult when you have small pieces like this. Might as well just leave them on here, mount them, and then spray over it, and that way you get the same layout as the rest of the body would be with those in place. Now. I have a few little things. Now, this is one of the reasons why I said about putting the clear coat on top of the diamond black or black diamond metallic before doing any of your striping. Because if you're going to make a mistake or you have a problem where there's some like a little bit of overspray that came through, um, there's a little point over here that's not supposed to be there. Uh, just some minor little things that happen that you have no control over. Sometimes when you overlap, even with the fine line tape, when you overlap tape onto each other, you got one going one way and one going the other way, you'll get a little bit of a gap. And that's kind of what happened over here. So I need to kind of scrape that off. Now, having the clear coat on top of the black diamond makes it really easy to get rid of that what, and all this over here without disturbing the black diamond base that's underneath the clear that works out really good that's why I said that in the last video so now what determines on how this is going to look is how many coats of candy apple red I put on this so if I put four coats of candy apple red on top of this and these are still like too light you know they're, they're not really uh, ghosted in then I have to put you know one or two more coats on there what I want this to do is to be noticed, but only when you move it with the light. That's what I want with this. Now, what I ended up doing with this is I ended up putting the striping down. This was all filled in with silver, okay? None of this was masked off. So what I ended up doing is double uh, width of the tape 
So whatever the tape was on the edge over here, I stuck another piece of tape on that edge and then went around it again and then on all the sides and then sanded this inner part over here to where it was back down to the clear over the diamond, the black diamond uh, metallic. And then what I ended up doing with this afterwards is I didn't take any of the tape off, the masking off of it. So after I got all the spots done that I wanted to have kind of misted in with the uh, metallic uh, silver, is basically what I did is I took the metallic silver, held it really, really far back away from the guitar, and or the guitar body, and just kind of like lightly misted over everything and that gave me this effect over here now when it bends because it's a metallic when it bends in the light you'll see darker and lighter spots and that's kind of what i wanted with the effect when i put the candy on top of this is seeing darker and lighter spots because of the airbrush situation over here which i have to look into because i had to talk with my father he says the air compressor works there's no problems with the compressor part of it, but the airbrushes are messed up because they're so old. Either they got a little bit of rust inside of them or there's there's something going on with them because they haven't been used in such a, many years. So I'm gonna go over to uh, my paint store and find out uh, you know what's going on with airbrush. Maybe even go over to Hobby Lobby and see what they got as far as airbrushes go. Um, airbrushes are kind of tricky. Uh, they all don't work the same way. You'll end up, if you buy three of them, you'll end up with a favorite one, and that favorite one will be the one that is used mo the most. And that's what I want to do is find an airbrush, because the next time I do something like this, I want these edges to be fogged in and faded out. That's what I want. Now, doing that with sandpaper is difficult, because the sandpaper, like I ended up going over this with 800 grit sandpaper in order to dumb down the silver all the way to the uh, clear coat. This way, when I do the silver mist on top of it, it'll look like this, not like this. That's a little difficult. If I had the airbrush, I'd be able to get my solid striping. And then when it splits off, I'll, it'll be a fade into the black over here. And it wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have to gone through this. Other, but this actually looks kind of cool the way I did this over here. I like it. With the edges that meet up, like say, um, like this edge over here and this edge over here are supposed to be together. But because I have another stripe coming through there, the edges are not as thick as these outer walls are. I made them thinner. That way it looks like they're supposed to be together. The same thing with this one over here. It's supposed to be together with over here. Same thing with over here. So I kind of like kept the same pattern um, throughout this whole thing to get the effect that I was looking for on this. Now the next part of it is just cleaning up the overspray. Uh, drilling in the remainder four screws. Was I, or wait, uh, one, two, three, four, yeah, the remainder four screws, and getting the pickup rings mounted, painting this with the shielding paint on the inside over here, cleaning up whatever overspray, because I did get a little overspray on the edges over here, and on the side over here, a little bit over there, clean that up, and it's ready for the candy red. So, not much to view as far as a video goes of learning how to do something mostly just talking a little bit about what happened what i did how i did it to let you guys you know if you guys ever want to try doing this yourself it wasn't that hard now a friend of mine was talking about um kind of like how i did the the sun body all right and uh with the the was it the chinese flag or the rising sun on the Charvel body and it was saying something without having the sun but having the striping going down the body and stuff so I was thinking about that and uh, the place where I'm getting my paints from now if I got like a say this black diamond and ended up getting like some type of a dark blue and did something like the same striping but just coming off and then coming off and rays from the corner over here without having a sun or a circle or anything else, or even in this direction coming off this way, uh, and then hit it with some type of a candy color over that, um, say like a, a candy blue that's in a lighter color or whatever, and I'll have control over how much depth those stripes have about how, with how many times uh, how many coats I put over it. So I was thinking about doing something like that and even doing kind of like a fogging like this 
uh, underneath the striping into the next one all the way down so that's an idea and hopefully I'll have an airbrush to do that with the spray cans the the taping of this and the spray cans I don't have a real major you can feel the tape line but it's not really bad I mean it's, it's not something that I go, I'm gonna have to go over and sand and knock down and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, and I don't want to try sanding it because I will lose these tips here, these real sharp points. I will lose them if I try sanding this, and I don't want to do that. So it actually, it really feels pretty smooth when you put your hand over it. There's not much gripping it as far as these tape edges go. came out really nice. When I applied the paint, instead of like just spraying it over like I would do a clear coat, I, I hold back a little bit. So it mists in, and a lot of the corners that were, you know, should I? Well, I thought was going to have a lot of a mess as far as corners to clean up and fix because of the uh, uh, spray getting underneath the paint. I didn't. I didn't have all that. I just had a few. So when you hold back, you could put uh, layers on top of it and mist as long as the cans. Now I notice with these cans here, they do not spit. They do not sputter uh, when you're applying the paint. It, it seems like I don't know. It just works like a gun. They're not bad. The pressure of the can as far as what's behind the paint, pushing the paint out of the can, is perfect. And now I see why the damn things are so expensive. And a lot of people use them for automotive stuff while I'm using them for guitar stuff. And it's been working out really, really good. All right, so I wasted about 18 minutes of your life if you made it this far. So I'm going to get my ass rolling over here and see about... Uh, you know, what's the plan is for tomorrow. You guys take it easy, have a good one, and I will catch up with y'all later.